Hi, this is an audio response to God rolling to a stop and Rob Lester on a guy named Rand Campbell, who's a Christian, a very immature Christian. And I'm really trying to sort of send out kudos to both Rob Lester and God rolling to a stop and people like them, atheists like them on the way that they're phrasing their arguments. And it's not just Rob Lester, it's also um, the atheist debate. And actually that guy is focusing on the best issues that atheists should focus on in debating with Christians. And that's why I'm making this audio. Sorry it's an audio, but I look like dog doo-doo and I don't want to turn on the camera. Um, If you want to play the atheist card, the best way to do that where you're going to make the Christian sort of run for cover, including me, okay, is to argue about the justice question. Okay, forget the, the evolution thing. All right, I'm dead serious about that. You're just going to chase your tail with evolution. Okay, um, what you want to focus on instead is justice. Now, I'm going to get to the justice question and why that's so important and strong an argument for an atheist to make in a minute. But first, let's go back to the evolution and why you don't want to talk about it. Okay, look, if you were arguing with me, and I'm an educated Christian, not a dummy like the young earthers, I would first of all tell you, hi, you're arguing based on your idea that the Bible says that the earth is 6,000 years old, but the Bible doesn't say that. So all of your arguments about evolution don't matter because you're trying to use evolution to say, well, see, the earth is a lot older than the Bible says. Well, I'm sorry, the Bible doesn't say that. So now your whole argument about evolution is shot down at the premise level. So you don't want to argue with an educated Christian. You only want to argue with the dummies who don't know how to read Bible. You're not disproving the Bible when you say that the earth is older than 6,000 years because the Bible doesn't say that. And I prove why you can tell the Bible doesn't say that in my Genesis exegesis videos where I go through the Hebrew and Greek. See, the real Bible is written in Hebrew and Greek. Translations screw it up. So if you want to argue against the Bible, you're going to have to argue what it says in the Hebrew and Greek and nothing else. And so when you're getting somebody like me to counter you, and you're going to argue about evolution, I'm going to prove you wrong immediately just from the Hebrew and Greek. In Genesis 1, 1, 1, 2, and 1, 3, it says flatly that there's no way you can know how long the time was. And the same thing is true in Isaiah 45, which talks back to those three verses in Genesis 1. So you don't want to make that argument. The other reason you don't want to make that argument about evolution is that as, even as a dumb bunny Christian, I can go to you and say, well, God decreed evolution. You can't prove that wrong. In fact, in fact, a lot of Jews and a lot of Christians actually believe God authored evolution, and they base that on Genesis 1, 25 through 27, where it simply says, and you know, simple, even in translation, that God decreed that everything, that animals be made after their kinds, their types. Okay, well, that's what evolution talks about. I mean, that's the core of what evolution is, is that one kind came out of another kind. And if you're arguing against the Bible, you can't. Because if all you look at are those three verses, then a Christian or a Jew, and a lot of them do, make the argument, well, see, God created evolution. He decreed it to to exist. Well, then, hello, there goes your whole premise. You can't prove that God did not decree evolution. So you can't prove that God exists or doesn't exist from an argument of evolution, period. Now, there are other things that are flat wrong about evolution from a scientific standpoint. Forget the God argument altogether. The genetic structure of everything, okay, proves that evolution is not a valid argument. Because the mutations that the genes go through, the parents are always superior to the kids. And you can also prove it from math, the way math is structured. But I'm not interested in proving evolution true or false because it's not an issue. All right? I actually don't care whether it's true or false. The Bible doesn't actually say. You know, Genesis 1, 25 through 27 is a verse that a lot of Christians use to argue that God decreed evolution. 
I don't find that true in those verses in the Hebrew and Greek because in Genesis 1-1 it just says that God, specifically the sun, flat created the heavens and the earth, meaning the whole universe. It's an expression in Hebrew. It doesn't say how. It doesn't say how long. It doesn't say, you know, whether he did it instantaneously or he did it over a long period of time. It just says he did it. And it's really an interpretational issue whether you say that he did it instantaneously, and then I, I hold to that interpretation, by the way, or whether you say he did it over a long period of time. The verb in the Hebrew of Genesis 1-1 just says he created it out of nothing. It doesn't say how long or whether he used an intermediate means. And actually, Christian theologians have been debating for a long time what Genesis 1-1 really means. There's a famous theologian who was an idiot named Thomas Aquinas, and he wrote something called the Summa Theologica, and you can get it for free on Kindle, or nearly for free, I think it's 99 cents, at Amazon. And he, he, one of the books in there is called Treatise on the Six Days, and he was trying to figure out whether God directly created the heavens and the earth, or he used the angels to do it. So you see, the Christians have been trying to figure this out for a long time. And not all of them hold to this recent phenomenon over the last 50 years of people claiming the earth is only 6,000 years old. So you got to be careful about how you make your evolutionary argument because it doesn't prove your point. It doesn't prove anything. And if I want to get really technical about it so that you're not clueless about the arguments that have been going on in Christendom, um, the Jews themselves date their calendar assuming that when Adam was created, that was year one of the universe. Well, they're wrong. They can't even read the Hebrew. Their whole calendar is off. It's off by 346 years, and you can even Google on that to find out. Just Google on Seder Olam Rabbah, R-A-B-B-A-H. And then you can find out all you want to know about the Jewish calendar. It's completely wrong. So that's as far as I want to go with sort of like filling you in on the backstory about evolution. So why you wouldn't want to use it, I don't know. Because it's a stupid argument to use, you just chase your tail. And so will the Christians. Now let's get to what actually works. See, because I believe in atheism. I think atheism is vital. I would defend atheism to my death, even though I'm a Christian. Okay? Atheism brings up a lot of points, many of which are totally irrelevant to the question of whether God exists. But one of the questions that you guys can keep on trading on, and should, is this issue about justice. Now, it so happens, and you don't know this because you don't know the Bible, it so happens that that's the central issue in the Bible. That's why we have one. Is that the whole Bible is like centered on this question of justice. Why is God just to create creation the way he did? Because, and you atheists bring that point out very eloquently at times, because what we see in the world is bad. So how can a good God create a universe that he knows is going to be bad and then let it be bad? That's a valid question to raise. And most Christians can't deal with the answer. I have trouble dealing with the answer myself. I'm trying to deal with it. I'm working through it in my Sat Strat series, which the link will be in the video description. I've been trying to deal with it now since last October, and I'm still not going to be anywhere near done. I've got at least three or four hundred more audios to put up, so it's going to take several years to work through the answer to that question. Not that anybody's going to want to watch or you know listen to that many videos or audios, but I have to work through it myself. So that's why I'm doing it, in case it helps somebody else. It's a valid question. Why, if God is a loving God, why does he allow things to be so bad? Why didn't, you know, he could, if he's omnipotent and omniscient, why doesn't he snap his fingers and make everything nice? That's a valid question for you guys to raise. And like the atheist debate said in his video, which is linked in the um, video description, I'm not going to believe in a God who's unjust. If there's injustice in the world, then there's no God. That's his conclusion. And it's a, it's a fair conclusion. 
the answer is actually bigger than that and it's hard to swallow why would God allow such a horrible world to exist because the first decree is truth must be free free to be bad free to be good free to be neutral free to exist free to be potential free to not exist and then God ensures that freedom and he says all this in Isaiah 45 now, I know that you guys don't believe that the Bible is from God but those of us who do have to base whatever we tell you on the Bible or what we're saying is not valid now you're not going to accept what we say is valid because we base it on the Bible but we have to justify it before God now your own acceptance of whether God exists or not is your own journey is God the God of a Bible or is he God of some other holy book well that's a question you're gonna to have to answer for yourself does God exist in any form whatsoever holy book or not that's a question you have to answer for yourself but here's the big thing a if God exists then he made you B if God exists and he made you then he's not a God of hatred because you're smaller than him so see if God exists and he made you and he must obviously love you then he'd want to show himself to you so D where's the proof and if you're willing to consider the idea that God actually exists E then you ask okay God if you really exist, I feel like I'm just looking at the ceiling asking this question, feeling like an idiot. If you really exist, I need proof. And if there's a God to answer you, because if there was a God to made you, he loves you, he wants to answer you, he wants to, you to have a relationship with him. If he actually exists, he'll answer you. Every one of us Christians went through that process. The proof that you get will be conclusive to you. It's personalized because God is invisible. So you might have proof that's conclusive to you, but hello, you try to explain it to somebody else and they're just going to like, oh yeah. It'll seem like you're hallucinating if they don't already have their own proof. See, a Christian can talk to me and say, I've got proof God exists A, B, C, D, E, F. And I'll hear that proof and I'll know from God directly that that person's telling me the truth or not. But if I don't know God myself, then I won't know that what he's telling me is true and I'll think it's false, understandably. So if I tell you how I know God exists, that's not going to prove anything to you. Nor should it. You should get your own proof from God directly. That's justice. Now the other justice questions that I brought up at the beginning for the first 10 minutes those are harder those are harder to grapple with they really are and I, I can't sugarcoat it I can't apologize for it all I can say is yeah those questions exist they're valid questions and every atheist ought to be raising them not just about the God of the Bible although your big hint that the God of the Bible is the real one is the attention that's fixated on it not just the God of the Bible but the God of any God because if God exists, why does injustice exist? It's a valid question, and thank God for atheists that you guys bring it up. Bring it up more often. Think it over. We Christians need you to raise those questions, and so does everybody else. So I'll be praying for you. Peace out.